This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I have a lovely, beautiful woman on the phone with me. Today, we're going to talk about some interesting films, uh, especially in the independents. We have Catherine Norlin on the phone. How you do, Catherine? Hi, I am doing great. What a name you have. Python what? Hyena. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, I like African wildlife, but I've always loved snakes. I've always had a fondness for snakes. But uh-huh. and yeah, and I like the spotted hyena, you know, and they're two of the most underappreciated animals on the planet, especially since they <laughs> You think? Well, you you know what snakes do? Mm. They are they are massive pest controls. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They say Even that. All the rats. <laughs> well, they say um, that they kill more rats and and uh, pets pets of, um, and pests uh, than birds of prey or cats. No kidding! Wow, yep. I didn't know that. Expert hunters, and of course, the spotted hmm. hyena have uh, a stomach like cast iron. They they can they can. Um, I I heard they they pretty much eat what we can throw away, more or less. They eat everything, including the bone. Mm. Yep, <laughs> yep. But they 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 said the, I read, had a documentary on one time. They said they'd be right at home in a sewer because nothing kind of hurts them. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Did you, did you see yourself in that? <laughs> no, but uh, the fact of the matter is, they clean up. You know, they clean up mm. the environment. So. Uh, they're often very misunderstood. So they're two. I like all kinds of animals, but those two um, kind of suit me best. Well, I think compared to um, husky dogs, because they're the dog that has the most predominant um, trait of having two different colored eyes. So whenever somebody notices that I have heterochromia iridis, they I, I, I joke around and say, "Yes, I'm part husky." <laughs> you know what's interesting? Um, when uh, of course Steve Joyner was the one that put us connected us together, he brought that up to me. You know, I said, "Did you see her eyes?" And I'm like, "Yeah, they two different colors." But I, I guess you just <laughs> confirmed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of times people think I'm just doing that for attention or on purpose. <laughs> I hated it growing up. I just wanted to fit in. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. You're the first person I've encountered that's had this. How, how does this happen? Uh, you know, I probably should research the science behind it, the genetics. I don't know. I haven't researched it. I read once that it happens to one in every eight million people. Oh. And I had somebody come up to me last Saturday at a, I was reading a couple poems at a spoken word event and um they said they studied it in college and it had to do i think with greek mythology and they said people with two different colored eyes were demigods and (laughs) he was going on really puffing me up (laughs) but i don't really know the genetics behind it you know the mutation or whatever okay well i was Mm -hmm. wondering if you'd give us a little bit of your background Okay. Yeah. Well, I live in uh, Los Angeles, California, and I moved here many years ago to start an acting career. Um, Before that, I was living in Minnesota. I didn't really have much going on there, to be honest. (laughs) But once once I realized I wanted to move to L.A., six hours after I drove into town, I had my first audition. So I really got things off with a bang. I've gosh, had probably six or seven hundred auditions since then. I've been in well over a hundred projects, uh, mostly independent films. Most of them have never seen the light of day, but <laughs> there have been a few that have. And uh, probably about 10 years ago, I started making my own projects as well because I felt very limited by um, the things that I was being sent out to audition for and the roles I was getting. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and I started writing um, screenplays and short films and and things like that. And now, today, that's I've I've authored two books and um, I just finished the seventeenth rewrite of a thriller film that I hope to produce next year. 
um, I just executive produced a film that is a apocalyptic horror western mm-hmm. um, that deal that's called Cannibal Corpse Killers that deals with The Walking Dead, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in development with a couple other films as well. Well, we're gonna go way back. I got um, some of your film listed down here now my apologies i have not seen any of these however mm-hmm. however <laughs> we're going to talk about them anyway and get them okay. out there yeah let's give give your films a little bit of attention and okay. uh because we live in the netflix uh generation now and uh true yeah so uh it can be looked at well the first one i have down here is smuggler's ransom now tell me about your role in that and what the film's about and what your role in that is. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. Muggler's Ransom. You are going way back. Yep. <laughs> um, I played a bad spy. Okay. Well, I was, I was playing on the wrong side. Let's just put it that way. Uh, that film got international distribution even though it was only a short film. I, I probably only had a day or two on that particular film. So it was a big role, but it was the first role I ever got to um, have a gun and uh, play more of a grown-up role on <laughs> detective. Because when I moved here, I looked very young, and I got a lot of young roles initially. So that was what I, one of the things I consider one of my first grown-up roles. <laughs> Do you, do you, uh, you say you play a spy on the wrong end of the track? Do you want to talk about any of the challenges for of doing this? Um, if, if I can be honest, I don't even remember because that was like 80 films ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize for that. Oh, that's I, all right. I should have an ironclad memory, shouldn't I? With all the dialogue I have to memorize. Well, what about office games? That one sounds like mm-hmm. a fun one. <laughs> That was a fun comedy. Um, we, I was considered somebody who was on the dream team. There was like the three sexy ladies that worked in the office that uh, apparently all the guys were attracted to. But no, maybe there's four of us. We were called the dream team. It was really interesting that that audition process because I actually submitted for um, the plain Jane kind of ugly girl. And I went to the audition looking very frumpy. I had uh, these crooked, dorky glasses, a really out-of-fashion hat, this baggy dress. And I tried to be as geeky as possible because in this film, she at the end of the film, she transforms into this like beautiful creature that nobody knew was underneath all of that. And so I did the audition at the end. They wanted to see my transformation. So I whip off the hat, I whip off the glasses, take my hair down, pull the frumpy dress off, and I have like a little crop top and mini skirt underneath. And they were floored and they like spun, spun me around and <laughs> wanted to see me from all angles. And they were calling me a young Michelle Pfeiffer and it was all very flattering. Anyway, the director says to me, if you actually look this good, we don't want you to be have that hidden throughout the whole movie. <laughs> uh. So they ended up casting me in a different role than I actually auditioned for. But yes, that was a that was a very fun a fun film, and I'm actually pairing up with that same director for a movie. Um, hopefully, that will be shot this year, and I will also be playing a detective. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, another film I got listed down here. I did see the trailer for this one. Uh, this mm. this one looks very psychotic. A film called Hole. <gasps> yes. You know, that director, Joaquin Montalvan, if you like horror films, you would appreciate his stuff. He That's the same director. Um, I worked with him on his film Hole. I also worked with him on his feature film, Mobius, and I was supposed to be in his film, The Legend of the Hillbilly Butcher, which I think came out last year. I said no. I said I don't play scream queens. I'm not going to be running and screaming and doing any of that. So (laughs) 
<laughs> so I said no to that role. But then when the film Cannibal Corpse Killers came out, we teamed up and did that together. Okay, so back to Hole. Hole follows three different people. Uh, it follows the killer who is being released from prison, and it follows the detective, and it follows uh, his main woman of the woman he's preying on. And um, really interesting twists and turns in this movie and what, I don't know, this might be a spoiler alert, but when you watch Hole, the movie actually takes place going backwards. Oh. So it's really, it's really fascinating. And um, you see the, the, the killing happening and all this stuff happening. But when you get to the end of the film, which is actually the beginning of the film, you realize he was asking the, um, the prison guards and the parole officer not to let him out. He didn't want to go back in society because he was afraid of what he might do. So that's probably getting away too many spoilers, but it, it, is, it is a fascinating movie, and that director, writer-director has a really interesting mind of how he puts things together. So definitely one to look out for it. I forget how, where it's, you can find it, but it is available online for purchase and downloads. Well, tell me about your part in the film. My part in the film, well, I played the detective's wife. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, the main detective, I was his wife, and it was very um, tumultuous for me because he would bring his work home and he would leave these awful pictures out of these crime scenes out on the counter for me to see. And it really, it really put a wedge between us and our relationship and made it very hard for us as a couple um, because he just couldn't escape his work in the cases he would bring home. And at one point in the film, I was also stalked by the killer, but um, my husband came home in time and I didn't get killed. Oh, okay, yeah, that was one that I was going to ask. If you were one yeah, of the... Yeah, the, uh... the, killer, the killer had a thing for blondes in flower print dresses. So that was kind of his M.O. of who he looked for. Don't just take the flower print dress off and uh, wear, wear <laughs> other clothes and you're, you're set. Right, right. <laughs> Let me guess, you wore a flower printed dress. Yeah. Don't yeah, do that. No, yeah, don't ever do that. Caution. <laughs> no, because I, I know that he abducted all these women. I was, I was watching the trailer. I was like, I wonder, is Catherine one of the unfortunate ones? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, not in that. I survived that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like a, a, a pretty tense, uh, almost kind of like um, an Eli Roth-style uh, horror film. Mm. Yeah, he's been compared to a few different people. Um, that name isn't the name I remember. But yeah. the the director, Joaquin Montalban, his, his slogan or his tagline is, a film without blood is like a marriage without sex. <laughs> well, there's a lot of marriages that don't have sex, so there you go. <laughs> well, you know, in his mind, that is just not right. <laughs> yeah. Well, one film that you did that kind of caught my attention, and I haven't had the chance to look anything up on it, but just I read about it, and it sounds interesting, is Reality Terror Night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a film I starred in with uh, Martin Cove, who you may know from Rambo, The Karate Kid, Cagney and Lacey. Mm -hmm. He's done tons of stuff, tons and tons of stuff. Um, and uh, it was also starring Leanna Mendoza. Now, she is definitely an up-and-coming name. She was just voted um, in the top 20 influencers of... Uh, Latina, uh, Latinas, um, voted one of the sexiest Latinas alive this last year. Um, she's really been doing a lot of great work and has a pretty big fan base. Uh, a lot of stuff she's done. Anyway, in, in that particular film, um, I played an executive producer okay. who, um, I'm trying to put a reality show together. 
mm-hmm. where five hot bikini babes will stay overnight in a haunted mansion. Sounds And fun. the goal is the first girl to come in contact with the ghost will win a, a big modeling contract. So that's kind of the premise of the show. Limits. We'll be monitoring your each and every minute. Is this going to be dangerous? I mean, for you or the ghost? <laughs> but what happens is that it really is a haunted mansion. And Martin Cove's character, um, he lost his wife tragically, and he started murdering women to get their body parts to kind of Frankenstein in a way to try to put his wife back together again. Wow. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting premise. Um, so I don't know how much I should give away. I guess it, you can find this, you can rent this or buy this on Amazon, Reality Terror Night. But I, my character actually ends up becoming possessed by Martin Cove's ghost. Okay. So I start to carry on <laughs> some of the things that he was up to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, before we get to can- Cannibal uh, Corpse Killers, out of those mm-hmm. four films I have mentioned, uh, which one was the most challenging to do? Um, Probably a reality terror night. Okay, and why? Uh... Well, there was one one particular scene. Well, it was interesting in that in that particular film. Um, well, one neat little side note: they decided to use the fact that I had two different colored eyes as kind of a a character thing in the movie. So, um, when I my character was just me, I started out with hazel eyes. I covered up my blue eye and had hazel eyes and then when the ghost was kind of visiting me coming in and out of me suddenly I had two different colored eyes because it was part me part him because Martin Cove has blue eyes and then when he was fully possessing me I then had blue eyes now this is subtle it's never mentioned in the film people you have to be really um, savvy to catch it I suppose but that's kind of how you know when the full transformation happened so um, the, the, the shoot was grueling. You know, when you're on these low-budget independent films, there's, it's just go, go, go nonstop. The goal is to get as many pages done as possible. And I believe that entire feature film was shot in just maybe 10 days. I mean, there might have been days they filmed that I wasn't there, but it was, it was very fast turnaround. You know, the big budget huge budget Hollywood films, they sometimes take two to three months to shoot. So, you know, just the hours and um, some of the conditions, you know, were, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as grueling as uh, Cannibal Corpse Killers, but um, out of the ones you mentioned, it was, you know, just just the schedule and and dealing with all the different people's personalities. Um, Yeah, I think that's, I'll leave, I'll leave that. It, you know, sometimes when you get a bunch of women together who are in bikinis, it's, sometimes it can get a little catty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to avoid that <laughs> situation. Um, yeah. This time I will stay. And I will do my best to see you. Enjoy. Yeah, but it was good. It was a good experience. It was my first shower scene. I had never done that in a film before. Um yeah, just the nervousness of, oh, everybody's watching me and on camera while I'm, like, in the shower. Uh, yeah. Was it, a nude, was it a nude scene or were you covered up? It, no, it wasn't really. I mean, for me, it was the least amount of clothes I had ever had on the movie. Okay. But I kind of just had a couple Band-Aids covering the... Okay. <laughs> The top part. Um, yeah, so that was, you know, being comfortable with 
that going on. And in the shower, we had we couldn't I couldn't take an actual warm shower because it was fogging up the lenses of the camera, and then they couldn't see. So you don't real I mean things that you don't realize when you watch a movie that you know the temperature is not <laughs> what you think it would be, and things like that. I mean, I consider it a great learning experience. Part of the challenge was acting like the the transformation of acting like a man. Once this man um, came came and possessed me, how then would I walk? And I made different choices for my character on how they would walk being in a woman's body wearing heels for the first time. And so I tried to make that like a character trait where I was having trouble walking in heels, but trying to still appear like I'm this woman. And, you know, just... Just interesting things that you as an actor try to think of to really bring a character to life and make it believable. Well, let's talk about cannibal corpse killers now. Okay. Yeah. Um, you play a character named Scar. Yes. Tell me about this did film. You, did you see the trailer for that one? I didn't see the trailer, but I did read okay. up on it. Okay. Um, well, just for those who want to know, cannibal corpse killers... Dot com is the website. Um, these cannibal corpses are, it's not just another one of those zombie movies. There's hundreds of zombie movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the unique things about this film and one of the things that sets it apart is that, sure, it has a Western feel and it's apocalyptic and there's a lot of apocalyptic things going on, but it these... People do not become cannibal corpses by a virus or by being bitten. And there, it's actually kind of a spiritual warfare going on because what happens in the beginning of the film, the magistrate has a blood covenant pact with the devil. And he opens up a portal that allows the demons to come from hell and they start reanimating the corpses. Okay. So the things that the things that would maybe work or not work in other zombie films don't work for the cannibal corpses. So I'm part of a team of five people who have all been affected by the um, the cannibal corpse apocalypse and um, we're going around some place to place, you know, the usual, trying to find food and shelter. But what we don't realize is kind of the head person of our group is he had his wife taken from him from the magistrate who started this whole thing 20 years prior and opened this portal to hell. So we don't know he's got a vendetta against the magistrate, and he leads us to believe that we're going to this town of Jawbone to get food and shelter and that there's actually people still alive there. And um, when really he has a beef with the guy who took his wife and she turned into one of those creatures. Um, I don't know what else I want to say about that. I feel like I'm not explaining it in a very exciting way. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> but it does have a lot of, I mean, we, being the producer, and we we found, it took two years to find all these locations, and the scenery is just beautiful. We filmed in all these deserted, abandoned places that were just thrashed, and it's really cool set dressing. Um, my character has the name of Scar because of what happened. Um, She lost her son. Uh, Her her own son became a cannibal corpse, and he tried to kill his mom, and he cut her face open, and that's why she has the scar that she has throughout the movie down her face. Um, So we ended up going to this town, and there isn't anybody left alive in this town, and it's just been overrun and overtaken by these cannibal corpse zombies and the magistrate at the same time is trying to do this blood covenant ritual with the head demon and trying to basically take over the world and have him be in charge of all the 
cannibal corpses. But our lead guy, Pike, comes to stop it before it can get to that point. And there's a lot of really good fight scenes in the movie. Um, I got to do, I think, three, I think more than anybody, I got to do three fight scenes in the movie. So that was interesting training. I, um, I had training three years ago when I shot a TV pilot for... Uh, this wrestling show. I don't know if you have heard of a show from the 1980s called Glow. I or have. Or Ladies of Wrestling. I have. You have? Yeah. Okay. So that very same director was putting together another show, kind of a spin-off of the Glow show, and um, it was tentatively titled Stem to Action. At least that was the title of the pilot, and it had... Some of the original cast members from Glow, mm -hmm. but they were judging the contest. So it was the women on the show were going through all these contests to see who would qualify to be, uh, you know, on the show as the next female wrestler. Um, why did they bring that up? How, what was that correlation? Oh, the wrestling training. I was able to incorporate <laughs> my wrestling training from that show, getting trained by the actual original Glow ladies. I was able to incorporate a lot of the moves I learned into the um, into the fight scenes for Cannibal Corpse Killers. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. So, um, do you have? Any... And that was that was grueling. We were shooting twelve hours a day. Our locations were always like two to three hours away, and some of the some of the days we were shooting, being this gorilla, and it was guerrilla filmmaking. There was only one, I think one scene in the movie where I actually had permits, where I actually got permits to shoot. It was like run and gun. There was, you know, the, the sheriff's coming to try to shut us down. There was people coming, kicking us off what we thought was abandoned property. Um, there were a lot of, you know, crazy stuff that happened during, during the shoot. 108 degrees. Um, filming some days, there's no shade. We had nowhere to go to the bathroom. I mean, ladies were having to go in the bushes. And <laughs> <laughs> it was, truly was like the epitome of guerrilla, shoestring budget, independent filmmaking. Hey there, it is Katherine Norland. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you guys think that this video would bless somebody else or that they need to hear it, please hit the share button. And there's a little bell button too, where you can be notified whenever I have a video that comes out so you don't miss a thing. I appreciate you guys. Remember always live true, love hard, shine bright, and I will see you in the next video.